Hey guys, Constance here. So, I pulled out my camera this morning, walked around, got a little bit of footage of the frost all over everything, and then I have not picked up my camera the rest of the day. Um, the bug has bit. That is the very early spring cleaning. I know... Uh, I know it's not spring cleaning time yet, but the beginning of the year, usually January, February, somewhere around there, that is when the bug always hits me. And then I kind of get a little bit of a second round when I can really open the windows and air out the house. But it has bit. Um, it might be early, but I'm doing it anyways. I have been cleaning and purging purging especially and organizing uh, most of the day and primarily working in my office area. I went through my desk drawers which seemed to be a catch-all for every little doodad and whatchamacallit and so I organized that, purged a bunch of junk out of there, just pointless things. Uh, worked on a few things in my bedroom as well. That's going to be, I think, the next big thing to happen uh, this week. And I'm going to be purging my closet. Uh, you know, I just have come to the conclusion I've got entirely too many clothes. I have a closet cram-packed full of stuff. Most of the stuff I never even wear. I just wear a handful of things and to be honest, I just don't need it all and so I'll go through a look and see what's in excellent like new condition that I will donate everything else I'm just gonna toss um, you know I listened to a podcast from Amy Fuel the other day and I don't remember if it was like a getting ready for the holidays one or when it was I listened to several of them and she talked about um, gathering up things to donate to Goodwill and charities and thrift shops and all that stuff. And <laughs> she, she said, if I do that, if I put a box of stuff to donate, it's going to sit there for months. And I will be honest, I, I am so guilty of that. I have driven all over Alabama for weeks, months even, with boxes in the back of my truck before. Um, so yeah, and clothing especially, you know, I read an article a while back about how thrift shops and charity types of places like that get absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of clothing that they receive. So unless something is in really great condition, and I don't mean like t-shirts and stuff like that, honestly those can get tore up and be used for rags. Um, but maybe nice clothing, uh, just yeah unless it's really nice and pristine I'm just gonna toss it or throw it in the rag bag but uh yeah I've just I don't know it, it's one of the things and I remember doing this last year too and I think I entitled that video where I was talking about it that it was time to purge it is I, every year I find myself wanting to do a great big purge and, and organize and clean and just I don't know get ready for the next year the upcoming year and I don't do a big spring clean I mean I do kind of a little bit but my big one is generally going to be in the winter because when spring rolls around I'm gonna be in the garden I'm gonna be outside working I'm not gonna be having time to work on my house and so it has been a rearrange clean up organized kind of day and as I said it's going to continue on throughout the week I'm going to be working on my bedroom next um, so I actually had a couple of questions I wanted to answer um, sorry I winced because I hurt my finger uh, in case you missed that video I actually broke my finger a few months ago and then a couple weeks ago I re-injured it so there's that <laughs> um, I had a few questions that I wanted to answer. Um, number one, in my, I think it was my last video, I mentioned 
about going back to eating paleo again and following that lifestyle. And I had some people asking about paleo versus keto and what the difference was. Now before I decided to do the paleo thing, I actually did a lot of research on them, on both of them and compared them both because I knew people who had done both lifestyles and both had lost a ton of weight or both lifestyles. The people had lost a ton of weight, got really healthy. And so I had done my research on them. Um, the micro version of the differences is with the keto diet, you are eating low carb, you are monitoring all of that, but then you've also got to track your micro and macro nutrients you have to really like count everything that you're eating each day because what you're doing is putting your body into a state of ketosis. That's where it gets its name, keto. Um, and honestly, that's just too much work. <laughs> I don't have time to be inputting data and all of that. The paleo diet, I mean, oh, and there's my timer. The paleo diet just basically has guidelines that you follow and that's just the way that you eat. It's not a lot of work in addition to, you know, doing new recipes and things like that. And so it's just easy and I had excellent results when I did that. So um, that's what I did. And I actually have an article on my website where I explain uh, what paleo is and if that interests you at all I will put a link down below where you can find that out so I've got something in the oven I've got to go get out real quick and so I'll be right back Hey guys, so as you can see, it is now the next day and we ended up getting busy with the goats and everything else. So by the time we were done, we didn't really have enough light to do much of anything out here. So I figured I would just pick it up this morning. So a, another question that has been asked was about uh, my tattoo. Uh, a couple of very um, sharp-eyed subscribers noticed that I had a new tattoo on my forearm. Um, a couple people thought I had a cut on my arm, but no, it is a cross. So I had wanted to get that sort of a tattoo anyways, um, and I decided to have it done in red just because it kind of pops. Um, but yes in hindsight maybe the color was a little um shocking because i guess in a way it could kind of look like an injury on my arm but it's not it is a tattoo of a cross um and i do actually have a second tattoo that i got recently and i know not everybody's into tattoos and that's fine um but this particular tattoo actually has a little bit of a story behind it and so I'm going to save that for another day and talk about it because it's pretty neat. And then I do have a couple really quick announcements. Um, first of all, if you are subscribed to my newsletter, which is a totally free way of staying up to date on everything on Cosmopolitan Cornbread, whether it's on the YouTube channel or the website, uh, if you are subscribed to that newsletter, uh, you know that my, my mailings usually come out in the mornings. Um, beginning this week, I'm going to be changing that up and I'm going to be moving it to the evenings. And I'm doing that for a couple of reasons, but the number one reason I'm doing that is 
I put out an email when there's something new, but it generally goes out the next day. So it's kind of like yesterday I posted this. And so instead of doing it in the morning that way, I'm switching it to the evenings. Um, that way it will go out kind of same day and hey, here's what got posted today. So that the notifications for that come out a little bit more timely. And by putting it out in the evening, I, I don't have to get up super early in the morning and uh, try and remember to do my newsletter or try and remember to do it the night before. I've got pretty much all day that I can get that scheduled because you know, sometimes I'm a little busy. <laughs> And the wind is kicking up, so I'm going to head into the house. Okay guys, so I thought I would bring you in here to give you an update on my baby plants and how they're doing. Uh, I have got seedlings all over the place. There are tomatoes up in every single row, so I've got every variety coming up. Uh, I don't know if there's every square yet. Uh, almost, almost. I think I see, I think I see two blocks that don't have a seedling popping out of it yet. Um, but those are coming along great. A lot of my herbs and such that are over here are coming up um, all over now. They don't grow quite as quickly, so I've got like little itty bitty things down in there, but they are coming along and so it's always exciting to come in here and just see the little baby plants and I will I will look at these a couple times every day just to see how they're doing and as you can see I have the lights uh, hung very very low super close to the tops of the seedlings and as I've talked about before the reason for doing that is so that your seedlings are getting just flooded with light so that they don't stretch towards the light and become leggy and weak. Um, a lot of times they can recover once you um, put them out in the garden if you bury them very deeply but I just feel like if you start them off stronger, you're going to have stronger plants overall in the long run. And part of the reason I check on them so often is to make sure the plants aren't actually getting to where they touch the light. Now these are LED lights and while they do get warm, they don't get scorching hot, so I don't know if they would damage the plants, um, the very delicate baby plants, if they were to accidentally touch it, but I don't want to run that risk. My other lights that I used in the past, the fluorescent tube types of lights, those do get hot enough that if the seedling touches that bulb, it will burn it. So you certainly want to keep an eye on your seedlings and move the light up or lower the plant, depending on what kind of lights you are using um, as needed. And you can see an Amazon box I have back here. My local Lowe's, I actually purchased <laughs> all of the um, grow lights, like the start from seed lights that they had, and it wasn't enough. They only had a couple of them, um, and so I ordered some more on Amazon. I was actually able to get these quite a bit less than I was at my local Lowe's, so I sort of wish I had purchased them all here, but that's fine. Um, so I do have a couple extras, and the reason I bought some extras is because I do have a shelf down at the bottom. As my plants get bigger and they get transplanted into individual little pots, of course they're going to take up a lot more space than um, these trays right here do. And so I want to make sure I've got plenty of room, and if I need to, I'll be able to use that bottom shelf. Um, for plants as well. <sighs> One of these days I'm going to get my greenhouse built. Our friend who actually likes coming out and helping us with projects, um, he is dying to help us build that and he actually brought it up about a week or so ago. And speaking of the greenhouse, I sat down and I priced it out again. Now when I originally had decided to build this particular greenhouse style, I had sat down, I'd done all the math, I looked at the supplies that we would need and everything, and I determined exactly how much it was going to cost to build this greenhouse, and it was going to run about $800. And 
with COVID happening and with all of the madness in the world and prices shooting through the roof, I was concerned that this could cost like triple the amount that I had figured. And so the other day, actually the very day he asked about building the greenhouse, I had just sat down and priced it out again. And thankfully, it's not going to cost as much as I thought it would. It is still more um, than it would have been originally, but it's only about 20% more or so, at least for the materials that I need. So that was a good thing. But in any case, I've got plenty of space in here for starting seedlings. And once it comes time to transition them out, I like to do the cold frame technique. And I have a super easy way of doing that with some straw bales. I will put a link down below where I show exactly how I do that. If you don't have the ability to build a greenhouse, this is kind of like a mini greenhouse on the cheap and temporary if you need it to be. So now, before I wrap this up, uh, I do have two other things I want to quickly mention. One is I am going to be going out of town later this week, um, going on a short trip up to eastern Tennessee. I'm going to be seeing my daughter and some of the family on Mr. Smith's side and uh, just spending a little bit of time up there. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to try and do any sort of meetup or anything like that. I don't know if there would be interest um, in me having one. If there is, just mention it down in the comments. And if, I, if I've got a number of people who want to try and meet me, like for coffee or something, um, I'll see if I can squeeze it into the schedule. No guarantees, but if there's interest, I'll try. Uh, and then one other thing. Over the weekend, I actually found a couple great little antiques. Now, I'm, I'm kind of slowing down the things that I buy for the house for a number of reasons. Number one being the purge that I mentioned earlier. Too much stuff. So I'm trying to be very selective and only getting pieces that I absolutely love. There was actually another thing there that I saw that I almost got. But it's like, what am I going to do with that thing? But I am not going to share the antiques that I got yet. I will do that in another video this week because one of the things I need to put together so that you can see it. So when I share all of that, I'll tell you about that other thing that I almost got. And I'm tempted to go back and see if it's still there. But I don't need it. But I really liked it. <laughs> so that is it for today, you guys. Thanks for joining me again here at the homestead. Until next time, love and blessings. <laughs>